everybody talks to me and they said, oh my gosh, you know, fish oil, there's tons of heavy metals in fish oil and it, it, that's a dangerous thing. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, there is somewhat of a concern, not really with fish oil per se. A lot of it gets filtered out. I would say, though, wild seafood, you do need to make sure you're sourcing it correctly. I mean, there are clean waters in Canada, Alaska, um, New Zealand, and other areas, but there are obviously other areas that are much more contaminated. So kind of my philosophy is I, I eat wild seafood twice a week, and on days I'm not consuming wild seafood, the other days. I'm consuming high doses of krill oil to get that healthy astaxanthin, which is a healthy carotenoid, and as well as choline. It's very high in phosphatidylcholine, which is important for the brain. And then also I consume high doses of omega-3 fish oil. Um, so I combine both of them. But you don't really need to worry about really heavy metals in fish oil. I mean, some fish oils, you might need to worry about the oxidation products. So I keep my fish oil in the freezer. to prevent. It won't, a real true fish oil will not freeze in the freezer. And it's that this is what the fish use in their cell membrane. So they don't freeze in cold water. Um, people always get shocked at me like, Dr. D, you put your fish oil in the freezer. Absolutely. It actually significantly reduces it from oxidizing. So I wouldn't really more worry about the contamination of fish oil. I do worry, though, more a little bit more about the oxidation of it. OK, so we're going to we're going to leave fish oil, but we got to we got to lay one to rest. So. This past week, big study once again showed that fish oil is worthless for cardiovascular health, as well as vitamin D is worthless. Uh, what say you? Okay, so that study was the vital study and they tested only 840 milligrams of EPA and DHA, which is a very low dose, so less than a gram of active omega-3s. And we had a study that came out at the, on the, and the same day, the full results came out of the REDUCE-IT study, where they, I've been publishing for a decade that they weren't giving a high dose of omega-3, but in REDUCE-IT, they finally gave four grams of EPA. And so the REDUCE-IT study did show a significant 25% reduction in cardiovascular events. And if you actually look at VITAL, there was a significant benefit on the primary endpoint in those who consumed less than 1.5 fish meals per week. But people that were eating more than one and a half fish meals per week, they didn't see that benefit. So that makes sense. If you're already consuming fish, adding a little bit of omega-3 fish oil isn't going to do any benefit. But if you aren't consuming a lot of fish per week, then you did. There was a significant about 20% reduction in the primary endpoint and about a 50% reduction in heart attacks and death from heart attacks, which is very important. Yeah, and I think that's really important. The, the devil is in the details. And, you know, those of us who write and review the literature, the abstract tells you one thing, but you got to get the paper and see what it actually says. And sensationalism works really good as headlines. So it's actually far more exciting to say fish oil doesn't work than to say fish oil is, is pretty good for you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we'll leave omega threes. Let's talk about the other fat, omega six. And everybody kind of hears, uh, you, know, you got to have a balance of omega three and omega six, or omega sixes are bad for you. Uh, give me your take on omega sixes. Yeah, I think if you're getting omega six, or which is linoleic acid, it's the parent omega six which gets eventually converted to arachidonic acid as it gets elongated in the body. If it's coming from whole foods, that's, that's okay. Um, because the whole food, like in a nut or a seed, is going to have a coating protecting that very unstable omega-6 fat from oxidizing in, your, in the acidity of your stomach. Um, and it's going to have vitamin E to protect the linoleic acid or the omega-6 from oxidizing. So nature is very smart. It packages highly um, unstable fats, you know, in, in a seed or a nut or some other type of substance and puts vitamin E there. The problem is, is with these heart healthy vegetable oils, they have been already oxidized because you can't just squeeze a cotton seed or you can't squeeze a soybean and, and you get a lot of oil out of it. it. It requires heavy machinery, hexane solvents, high heat. And so those vegetable oils that you're told to cook with they're already oxidized before you even start cooking them in your, in your pan. And so, and then you start cooking these omega-6 heart healthy vegetable oils, you oxidize them further, you consume them in the gut and your 
own acid starts oxidizing them. And then you absorb these omega-6 fats. And what's really, I think you'll really appreciate this. There was a study that showed if you give omega-6 to animals, it actually grows the bacteria that produces LPS. Whereas if you gave the animals omega-3, the bacteria that would thrive was bacteria that didn't produce LPS. So it almost goes to show you that this omega-3-6 balance is even controlling your gut microbiome, which when I read that, I, I was actually pretty shocked. Yeah, there's actually some very interesting work. I talk about in the plant paradox that omega-3s, uh, long-chain omega-3s actually prevent LPSs from appearing in the bloodstream, partially because they change the gut microbiome. You're absolutely right. 